Hi, I'm Holly Smithson, the Chief Executive Officer of Athena, and thank you for joining this edition of Blueprint for Success, brought to you by our friends at San Diego Gas and Electric. And we are not fooling around this April because we have a special guest joining us, Kathleen Delaney, who is the Chief Marketing Officer of COFAX. And welcome. Thank you. Great to be here. Delighted Thanks to have you. Us. Yeah. So what I want to talk about, because you have a really interesting uh, introduction to uh, the STEM world. So yeah. could you tell our viewers a little bit about um, how you got introduced to um, the field or the academics of STEM and then how that uh, sort of developed your, your passion for uh, statistics and applied math. Sure. So I was raised to be a teacher or French major. That's how I kind of started college and that's honestly where I thought I'd be a translator or something like that. Um, and I tell the story where um, to graduate from Rutgers University I needed to pass this Statistics 101 class and I had failed it three times at this point. So second semester, or my junior year, um, I went to this TA, uh, his name was Dan, and I begged him to help me get through this. And Dan had known me um, through a couple of friends and stuff. He knew my background, and I used to row competitively for records, and he put it stats in context for me and just talked about standard deviation and when Michael Jordan does this and how many free throws. And all of a sudden, like, this light bulb went off in my head, I'm like, oh, wait a minute, this, I can't do this. Math is hard. I'm not a math major. I can, I'm like, I'm, this sucks. And a light bulb went off for me that, wow, I, I can do this, okay? And it was really a moment that changed, honestly, the rest of my college career and set me up for a lot of what I'm doing now because I ended up graduating with an applied math degree. And I, I actually liked it. I liked the challenge. I liked being able to overcome something. At that point, I had read so much French literature, I was done with it. And there was, my brain turned on in a different way. My first job out of school was just as an analyst, okay? And I analyzed everything from health and benefits to Johnson & Johnson, you know, how many babies were born, what the cost of the babies were born, that whole nine things. And I also analyzed marketing programs for them. Um, and then I moved over to AT&T and again was in another analytical role that was just a programmer. And I joke that I'm a lousy programmer, so I got promoted into management, so they put me off the keyboard. Um, but I started with my team analyzing marketing programs, and that's really how I came to become, you know, a, or came to enter a purely marketing career, if you will. But it's always been with this eye towards data, and I don't know how to think about things any other way, really. So that ha I think has served me well in my career, um, and now, you know, there's so much literature written about the convergence of IT and marketing and data and how it all comes together. So, you know, I'm very confident when I look at that and that's not your typical marketing background by any stretch of the imagination. I, I, I love your, I love the epiphany that you had that it's really the opportunity for young students that are looking at STEM as a career but really the need to contextualize it. Um, and that's what this TA, this teacher's yeah. assistant, did for you. That was the difference. And I think for women, too, you're not, you're, I, I hate to generalize, I really do, but I, I, I often feel that young women aren't given the support that it's okay to go try. And it's okay to not know the answer the first time. And Lord knows, I sure as heck don't, okay? So making it okay for girls, and, and I have a 15-year-old daughter, and that's something that you know is really important to me, is is to push her enough that she knows it's it's okay to try. You know, obviously you don't want to push too much to break anything, but um, I, I just see that with other young girls, you know, in my world right now, there are a lot of them that are 15, and they're all adorable. I love you all. Um, it, it's just important, I think. Yeah. So talk to me. So as a, this is our this is our first uh, chief marketing officer that we've had on our Blueprint for Success series, and we know it is a very very high stakes position. Um, it is um, in large part because there's so many um, P and L, there's so much revenue um, business units that fall under your purview. So talk a little bit about how that looks like. What is that like, particularly in a software um, company, which is typically male um, dominated? Talk yeah. to us a little bit about that. Well, the um, average life cycle or lifetime for a CMO, I think, is two and a half years. Um, and you know, I laugh because it's like, because everybody thinks they can do marketing. What's marketing? You put up a couple of brochures, and it, there's a lot more to it, obviously. And and actually, right now, the influx of IT and and data in marketing is like nothing I've ever seen in my career, and I've been doing it for a long time. Um, I, where, for me, 
oftentimes I'm the only woman in the room. And you've got to just get comfortable with that, okay? And it, there's no easy way about it. I mean, I'm very conscious sometimes that I'm the only woman in the room or, you know, the only woman on a stage. Um, and it's, for me, bringing women along is super important, okay? But knowing that I've got to have the credibility at the table to be able to make that happen, okay? And having confidence, if there's one thing I can say, is having confidence in your opinion. And, and that's with any executive, okay, not just a women, but I do think it's very important for women because if you put something out there and then people jump on it and you cave immediately, well, they're not going to listen the second time. They're going to ignore you, even though it's probably very good. Obviously being prepared, you know, and all the stats that women have to work twice as hard as men, you know what, I, I think it's okay not to know the answer sometimes and be transparent in that because you do bring a different perspective. I mean, I know in my role now, I point blank ask them, I'm like, are you guys ready for me? Because it was a, save the head of HR, it was an all male operational team that I came into. And I think that it's uh, just a different way and you didn't bring a different perspective. When I hear your um, career and I hear your career track, I'm, I, I have to think because you obviously display such a, a wonderful sense of confidence and you. your confidence is only out performed by your authenticity. It is just, you just ooze with authenticity. Oh, all right, thank you. <laughs> um, so talk to me a little bit about how those um, those traits were developed in you. Gosh, I Was there know. support? Were there mentors or advisors or yeah. something to reinforce and support that because you have it? Well, thank you. Um, it, it, at this point in my career now, I do have a lot of confidence in my approach to things and the decisions that I make. Um, now, there's a difference between, um, what I'll say, um, ego or, or arrogance and confidence, okay? Um, I have made a lot of difficult choices for myself in my career along the way. And that is you know, something that a, a mentor at AT&T told me ages ago, is that your career is your responsibility. And this is like mid-80s, AT&T, where you had guaranteed a job for life if you got into that company, okay? That doesn't really exist anymore. Um, but what she said to me is, don't ever sit back and expect this company to do things for you. You need to go find the next opportunity. Um, and I really have always taken that to heart. Um, and have just, I, I have pushed like a bull in a china shop in, in several situations. Some served me well, some frankly didn't, okay? Um, and yeah, I've made some big mistakes in my career. And being able to stand up and say, okay, dust yourself off and move on, it's like, all right, the next thing that comes along, I know I'm gonna survive, okay? I'll figure it out. And, and you get smarter with it, you know, working with wonderful women like yourselves. I mean, that helps building the network around you. Um, you know, we moved to San Diego just five years ago. So I moved from New York where, you know, I graduated from grad school from NYU. My career was in New York and here I am in Southern California. And like, honestly, I couldn't have been happier because everybody wants to move to San Diego. But at the same time, it was a little daunting because I really didn't know anybody save the peers in my new company. So really building a network here in SoCal was important to me putting myself out there and just walking up to strangers at the you know corporate directors forum or whatever and, and just getting to know the business leaders in the community. Um, you know, you 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 make it or you don't and you just gotta keep doing it. It's just like a muscle really that you just gotta keep practicing. So when I think about um, our our listeners and our viewers and, and they're looking to the blueprint for success, yeah. they want to hear the stories and they want to see the women um, that have made it to the top of the corporate ladder. So help me finish this sentence. If it wasn't for this experience in my career, I wouldn't be where I am today. And I'm looking for an mm -hmm. opportunity to boil down and distill that, that X factor. Yeah, if it wasn't for my ability to take chances, I wouldn't be where I am in my career, okay? And, and having a wonderful partner that would support me in that, okay? Because I have a I have family, I have two children, and it's not, it, it hasn't been easy oftentimes for my husband in some of the choices I've made, and he and I have sat down, even before we moved out here, hey, I'm gonna go for this job, I don't know what's gonna happen here, and if I do, I'm gonna be traveling 60% of the time, mm -hmm. okay? So if it wasn't for having the ability to take some of those chances, I wouldn't be where I was at, I, I am in my career. I love it, okay. <laughs> taking risks. Absolutely. Taking and, and, risks. Uh, you have to, and I think it, 
it's very incumbent on women to take those risks and there's always going to be a reason why you shouldn't whereas for men the risks are a little bit easier to swallow or the or society accepts the risks a little bit more and there's more of an infrastructure to support them in the risks okay but it's not so much uh, with women by any stretch well I think that is a fabulous send-off to round out this month's blueprint for success again thank you so much for joining us Kathleen Delaney thank you is the chief marketing officer for Irvine based Kovax and you've heard it here where people come to find their empowerment. And thank you so much. That wraps up this edition. Thanks to San Diego Guessing Electric for this month's Blueprint for Success.